Hey everyone, in this video we'll be taking a look at how three European countries plan on dealing with increased flood risks due to rising sea levels in the coming decades. To start off, I think it's important to get an idea of where in Europe is the most at risk. Predictions for sea level rise really just depends on whether or not we stabilize emissions before 2100, so sea levels could in theory rise only just under 1 meter if we drastically lower emissions and reach zero emissions by 2100. But if emissions keep increasing, the seas could rise up to 4 meters. For this video I will go with what I think is a more realistic scenario, one where worldwide emissions are close to stabilizing in 2100 but are still not anywhere near close to zero resulting in a 2 meter sea level rise, shown as red on this map, indicating high risk areas. The lighter red meanwhile is areas that would be prone to flooding during additional 3 meter storm surges. As you can see, the region most at risk in Europe is obviously the Netherlands. Much of the country is in fact already below sea level and protected by various forms of coastal defenses. The coastal region stretching from northwest Germany to southern Jutland and Denmark is similarly at risk and other parts of Denmark, most importantly parts of Copenhagen and its southern suburbs, could be underwater in the coming century if no action is taken. Although it won't be a topic of this video, definitely worth mentioning is also the Venezia region in Italy, home to Venice, which is very low-lying and thus also at risk of severe flooding if left unprotected. The area around Gdańsk, the entrance to the Oder River, as well as parts of England are in a similar predicament. Just as we can't leave our coasts unprotected from rising sea levels, you should not leave your internet access unprotected. Use the sponsor of this video, NordVPN, at nordvpn.com slash neatling. NordVPN is easy to use and directs your internet traffic through fast servers all over the world. This hides your location and encrypts your data, which prevents ISPs from tracking and selling your digital footprint or throttling your download speeds. If you live in a country that restricts internet access, NordVPN circumvents this and allows you to access the internet from all over the world. What I personally find most useful is the ability to access streaming services like Netflix from other countries. If you like me or interested in history, the British catalog offers an overall larger choice of history content than most regions thanks to BBC exclusive documentaries. You get protection on up to six devices whether they're running Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, Linux, or even Android TV. To celebrate NordVPN's 10th birthday, go to nordvpn.com slash neatling to get the two-year plan with an exclusive deal plus one month for free and a bonus gift. It's risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. So, what are some solutions we could implement to avoid flooding in these at-risk regions? In the Netherlands where they already have extensive coastal defenses, it is quite simply to expand on them. A project to reinforce the well-known Afslaudijk that turned the Zouderzee into a lake 90 years ago is well underway and expected to be completed in 2025. Further south is also the Delta Works, completed in 1997. It's a series of dams, locks, dikes and storm surge barriers down in the Zeeland region. This project was quite a bit different from the Zouderzee Works and Afslaudijk, however, as the storm surge barrier Maaslandkering, as well as the Oosterschelterkering Dam, are temporary barriers that close off their rivers whenever the sea levels rise above 2.6 or 3 meters respectively. They are not built for a permanent rise in sea levels of that magnitude, so long term the Dutch government has assessed they must plan for a 1.3 meter rise in sea levels by 2100 and 4 meters by 2200. So these defensive barriers will need to be improved upon and raised to account for the much worse storm surges, possibly even more than the Dutch government predicted if we don't manage to lower emissions drastically. To deal with the permanent sea level rise itself, other solutions like dikes further inland and some reshaping of cities like Rotterdam will likely be necessary. Perhaps they could get some inspiration from this next project over in Hamburg in Germany. Hafen City is a borough of Hamburg and a modern urban development situated right next to the Elbe River a region that will face more frequent flooding as sea levels rise. The Hafen City Urban Development Project was approved in 1998 and is thought it will be completely finished by 2025. What is interesting about Hafen City is how a lot of work was put into future-proofing it as floods become more severe. Essentially, Hafen City has been constructed with strict flood protection rules, such as requiring new roads and public spaces to be built over 7.6 meters above the normal high tide line. Buildings along the shore remain at their original level, but must be waterproofed up to the elevated road level so that whenever the city does flood, it doesn't cause any damage. The elevated roads and public spaces also make it so that people can continue to move about the city even when the lower level is flooded. 
Buildings right by the shore are also required to have entryways on the elevated road level so that they can be accessed during times of flooding. Of course this strategy only really works in urban areas. While I haven't been able to find a proper plan in the very at-risk rural parts of northwestern Germany, as I see it there is really only one solution. Build more dikes and reinforce the dikes already there, such as by the Wattensee in Schleswig-Holstein. Speaking of Schleswig-Holstein, let's move over to neighboring Denmark. Along the Danish portion of the Vaden Sea, the system of dikes continues along the coast, and this dike will quite simply have to be expanded upon as sea levels rise. Also troublesome for Denmark are the more developed parts of the country that will face flooding if nothing is done. Although Copenhagen has already been preparing quite a bit for rising sea levels and future storm surges. Copenhagen currently has a series of artificial peninsulas and islands which provide some protection during storm surges. Nohauten, for instance, is a major urban development project which will be finished in 2025 and is being constructed with sea level rise in mind. Currently though, there is still a gap between Nohauten and the also artificial Refshelern, which is why the new Lunedeholm artificial island project will be in this area. It's an urban development project similar in scope to Nohauten, which should be finished in 2070, although it will be protecting Copenhagen well before all the urban developments are finished. The project has faced some controversies I won't get into in this video, but I felt that it was important to mention, so go look up the project if you want to learn more. As for coastal defenses against the permanent sea level rise and not just storm surges, well, closing off this gap with Lunedahalm makes it much easier to eventually completely seal off the waters between Sjælland and Amma in the future if necessary. Further south along the Kurbukt or Kur Bay coast, there will also be major flooding if nothing is done to protect these areas and a major project in this fairly densely populated and low-lying region has been initiated, namely the Kur Dyke project. It is exactly what it sounds like, a dike stretching along the coast of the area by Kur, which should be finished in 2023, and in the future there will likely be many more projects like this across Europe and especially in low-lying countries like Denmark. I think one of the biggest takeaways from researching this topic is that there is no organized overall plan for how we deal with sea level rise. We'll have to deal with it case by case and region by region, and defending against the seas will be an ongoing process. A lot of the projects we are implementing today, or have implemented in recent times like the storm surge barriers in the Netherlands, or artificial peninsulas in Copenhagen, are temporary solutions. They protect their respective regions whenever sea levels temporarily rise, but long term we might have to consider closing off some of these inland waterways and building new harbors. It really all depends on how quickly we lower emissions. But that's about all for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you to all my channel members and a special thank you to my second tier member, Lada Hieno. See you all in my next video.